open? Okay, let's write notes. Oh. You don't have to, so yeah. don't worry about it. Just watch the YouTube video. Yeah. Oh, I already saw something flying. Then again, I see things a lot. Generator operation. All right, so it says use the PowerPoint. This will cover basic operation of a generator up to the commutator. Although I went all the way up to the interpoles. The interpoles. All right. Excuse me while I get this going. Whatever. <laughs> I have yet to figure out how to adjust the default things. All right. Uh, so a generator turns what? Mechanical energy into electrical energy. No, it isn't. I knew I should have done transformers first. All right. Faraday's first law. Maybe I should have done this a long time ago. Whenever a conductor is placed in a varying magnetic field, an EMF gets induced across the conductor, called induced EMF. And if the conductor is a closed circuit, then induced current flows through it. I think every word of that is probably something to write down. Whenever a conductor is placed Oops, that is not placed. By the way, I was doing some notes and I was using Microsoft text-to-speech and I was writing some stuff about magnetos. You cannot say the word retarded. <laughs> I always put asterisks. I'm like, it's a dirty word. <laughs> Whenever a conductor is placed in a varying magnetic field, in a varying magnetic field, Field. An EMF, what does EMF mean? Electromotive force. Electromotive force. An EMF gets induced. What does induced mean? Yeah, but let's think about this. A conductor is placed in the varying magnetic field. An EMF gets induced. I guess I should finish this in. Um, across the conductor. So I take the conductor, I put it in a magnetic field, and an EMF gets induced into the conductor. So the magnetic field induced a mag uh, voltage current flow in the inductor. Just like with the magneto, when the magnet rotates and lines of flux go around through the coil core and that magnetic field grows across the primary, what just happened? Induced you induced current in the primary. Sure, current's a byproduct. Or is it a product? I think byproduct means it was a secondary. So it's a product. But yes. Uh, conductor um, called induced. Called induced EMF. And if the conductor. is a closed circuit,
then induced current flows through it. A magnetic field can be varied by various methods. Why do I want to vary the magnetic field? I mean, I just kind of threw that out there. A uh, conductor is placed in a varying magnetic field, right? So whenever a conductor is placed in a varying magnetic field, the EMF gets induced. How, now I'm going on to say the magnetic field can be varied by various methods. What are these methods? Shock speed. Mm -hmm. Rotation. Um, all right, I'll just write down. Yeah, you guys are right. So speed. So uh, by moving the magnet. What's an example of moving the magnet to vary the field? Rotating. Oh, uh, who does that? Magneto. Magneto. It's just like a magneto. Just like a magneto. Quite a generator. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Moving the magnet. What else we got? All right, moving the conductor or coil. I'll say coil, conductor, the wire, whatever. And this, I don't know, almost is like the one we just wrote by rotating the coil relative to magnetic field. which is really, I think, the most appropriate for what we're doing with the generator. Now oh, I already see a problem with my notes. I'll just write this one. Let me see. Um, the generator, a, a DC generator will produce AC in the armature, but with the use of a commutator. will output DC. I was going to say DC current, but that's what the C stands for. <laughs> I'll put, oh, you know what we could put? Um, ripple DC. Ripple DC. That's what it's called when it never... It's got ripples. Yep. And remember that a capacitor can help help uh, filter out the ripple. If I was going to use a capacitor, would I put it in series or parallel? Parallel is correct because if I put uh, in series in a DC anything, it does not work. All right. So going back to our slide in our example of how a generator worked, um, let me see. We used we used a rotating armature. A 
rotating armature and permanent magnets. And that doesn't really work too well. And the reason why is because we have to regulate the generator. Uh, in our, the example we use, that would be completely useless for all purposes. Uh, it would be useless as an AC generator because in AC, we want the hertz to be correct and the cycles per second on the generator that we made would be purely dependent upon the speed at which we rotated the armature. So the faster the armature, the closer the sine waves would start getting to each other and the slower would widen out. So now we have a varying um, cycles per second, varying hertz, which would not work out very well, right? Don, say yes. Yes, whatever he said is correct. And not only that, we had no way to throttle it to control what the generator is doing. It's just, there you go. Your output is going to be dependent on how fast you spin it through the magnets. So the faster you spin it, the higher the voltage. Do we know why? Because relative speed. The wire is cutting across the lines of flux faster. And that's one of the things that helps it increases our output, right? The speed at which we cut the lines of flux. So if we spin that generator faster, then we're going to get more voltage. Well, we, we eventually changed it, so we had a commutator on it. So now we're looking at DC voltage. So the faster I spin it, the higher my voltage. So if I put that in an airplane, as long as I'm idling, maybe I would get one or two or three volts, you know, or, you know, say 12. And then I go full throttle and it goes 28 volts. Well, that's just going to, you know, blow out the radios and boil the battery. So that wouldn't work. Unless you had 28 volt battery and equipment, then it would work at full throttle, but as soon as you power back a little bit, you'd lose your voltage and have to run off battery. So uh, none of that would work. Just keep it at full throttle 100% of the time. Just, yeah. Just never slow it down. Just start it, it up. You want to start That's it. like the, uh, uh, we haven't done that class yet, but the old rotary engines, not like Mazda rotary, but the gnome rotary where the cylinders actually spin around, they ran that way. They, you start them up, they just go to full power and they had what's called a coup switch on it, coupe, C-O-U-P. And uh, when you did it, it grounded out the magnetos and said it would just shut off. And so all you had was full power. And so if you want to idle, you went like that. <laughs> all right, in an actual generator, so an actual. Actual generator uh, uses electromagnets. electromagnets wrapped around an iron core. Generator uses electromagnets wrapped around an iron core. All right, that's one word. Yeah, sounds familiar? Okay, yeah. Sounds like a generator? <laughs> Weird that. All right. Uh, these are called field coils or field poles. Field coils are field poles, and they are not permanent magnets. They are electromagnets. electromagnets. That's a good thing. That means we can control them. If we make an electromagnet, then we can either add magnetic strength to increase the output of the generator or decrease the field to decrease the generator. That's where they get their name. What? Field, field coil, field pole. Where they get their name? The field field produced? yeah oh the magnetic field oh got it it's called field because it makes magnetic field all right there we go all right controlling the current through the field poles 
controlling the current. <laughs> through the field. We'll call them poles. All right, so we, where I'm just kind of getting ahead of you. So we know that the field poles are magnets. In our example, they were just permanent magnets. But we have to stop and think about a generator, which we know turns mechanical energy into electrical energy. But when we think about what a generator has to accomplish, we've had batteries, we know a 12 volt system what should be about the approximate charging voltage for the battery? 14 right around 14, 13.8, 14.2, somewhere around there, okay? So in, let me think, yeah, in this section I'll do it. So the battery starts the aircraft, but as soon as the battery starts the aircraft and the generator or alternator comes online, the battery is just a load. And it's there in case we need it. If some reason the generator doesn't put out enough output, which is common for a generator, then we'll take it from the battery. But as soon as the generator's putting out enough, we're gonna put it back in the battery. So we have to control a couple of things with the generator that you gotta watch for. The primary thing we have to control with the generator is its output voltage. We can't have it going to 16, 18, 20 volts. It will. A 12 volt generator can easily put out 20 some volts that fast just right I did it with you today uh -huh. I'm like watch this bang and it's like whoa and it just pegs the needle I mean faster than you can watch the needle go so we have to control the voltage number one so we don't blow up lights radios and stuff like that and the battery so two we've got to control the current output generators have a rating they can only put out so much current when you exceed that current the generator will do it for a time but it gets hot when it gets hot it starts to melt the solder in here. And because it's spinning, it starts spitting out the solder. And so once you start spitting out the solder, you, know, you kind of melted it. So we want to control primarily the voltage to keep everything in the aircraft happy. Then we have to control the um, output amps to keep the generator happy. So we got to do those two things. And we're going to add a third thing later, which is reverse current cutout. All right, so let's see through the generator. What I got in here? Um, However, one of the nice things about the generator is we stop and think about it. All right, so we need a field for this to work, right? Can't just spin it. We got to have what? Magnetic. magnetic field. And our magnetic field is? Electromagnets. Electromagnets, which means where do we get the electricity for the electromagnet? From the generator itself. Well, we haven't got there yet. What's uh, yeah, the old battery's the only other option is, is the option we have, which wouldn't be a bad thing, but whoever thought of generators thought, hey, what if that iron core that we wrapped all the wire around for the field coals, coils, we made it a little magnetic, not too much, because if it was too much, we couldn't control it, but just enough that if we were to spin Spin the armature inside of that relatively weak magnetic field, we could probably get two or three volts out of it. And then with that two or three volts, we could send that current around the field coils. That would then create six volts, and that six volts would add more, and then we'd get it to 12 volts off two. So follow? So we're going to use a really weak magnet to get it going. That's called self-induction. It works all on its own. So if you were to take a, a car or an airplane that had one of these systems in it and the battery was, it was left on and it was completely and totally dead. I mean, open circuit voltage is like zero. 
there's nothing left. And you're like, huh, I wonder what would happen if I just like hand prop the airplane. Would it work? Yeah. Sure would. Battery's probably toast, but it would work. Give you 12 volts. So let me see. Uh, so the iron core. of the field coils, the iron core of field coils, or not coils, field poles, retains a small amount of magnetism. That allows the generator to become self excited. Small amount. How much is that small amount? Three volts. Uh, about two volts. So this means no external current is required to get the generator working. And what do we call that small amount of leftover magnetism? Self-induction. Uh, it has some retentivity. Residual magnetism. Is what we call it. Yeah, I didn't think that would happen. is enough to create about two volts. And um, I'll call it excite. Excite the field poles. There is a key to these generators. See. Oops. Types of generators. And this might be somewhat limited to um, Delco Remy, which is uh, Chevrolet. You'll find that aircraft use automotive uh, charging systems. Uh, alternators are Ford, Chrysler. Um, I don't think these Chevy, Ford or Chrysler, I think. And then generators, uh, Chevy's one type. So, so uh, if, you have, if you have an experimental aircraft, can you just go to the auto parts store and get one then? Is it the same exact thing or is it just... Is it's it different, different, but yes, when you own an experimental, you absolutely can go to the parts store and get anything you want. I'm wondering if they're just exactly the same, except for one has been under like a river. No, I've got a thing in here that I'll get into towards the end about differences. Uh, the generators you're working on, uh, they seem awful automotive to me. I don't think they're uh, off an aircraft. Let me see. Uh, where am I here? Uh, a and B type. So we have A and B. B type generators. And let me think. I want to draw a picture of one, but I don't know if I have it in my head enough to do it. Let me think. All right. 
So we have a generator. And inside of said generator we have, this is so awesome. What do we have inside the generator? Armature. Armature. Armature spinning, but it spins in the center, not off center, but it's perfect circle, so whatever. And off to the side we have? Field windings. Field windings. All right, so off of here we have? Brushes. Okay, and so we have a positive brush and a negative brush. And let's see, if I ran this over to here, and I hope I get this right. Um, let's see, we could do this, goes to here, and this is the post, and that is A plus. And we'll take this one and not touch that. It'll go over to here. Uh, I really kind of screwed should've I should, I know I thought that a minute ago. I can still do it, not too late, there we go. There's a post. It says A plus. And there we go. There we go. And this post is F for now. Field. What is missing here? So arm A plus is armature. That is power out. A plus is generator power out. Out to what? Electrical circuit. Electrical circuit, the bus bar, the aircraft system. That is your A plus. That is, that's the big boy right there. All right, we'll make it red because it's a positive. Everybody follow that? Mm -hmm. There's only two posts on a generator. That's the nice thing. There's a lot more on an alternator. So A plus, where does that go? Power out. Usually it's going to go the uh, voltage regulator that says BAT. That's usually where it's going to go, battery or BATT. But we got the F over here. What does F stand for? Field. 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 What is the field missing to make it work? That's what I kind of forgot. There we go. We'll ground that to the frame. Does that look right? So that is missing a ground. Yeah? So in this case, I'll make it F minus, because it wants a ground. And so what do I need to do to make this generator? Oh, let's talk about what we know already. So I start this generator up and I'm running it, and I don't put anything on either one of these posts. And I take a voltmeter and I put it right here. How many volts am I going to get? Yeah, about two volts. Why about two volts? Because of the residual magnetism. How, how well are my field coils working right now? Not they're not because they are? They're not. They're open. They're worthless. So where am I getting voltage from? The permanent magnets. And that's going to give me about? Two volts. So if I were troubleshooting a generator and I did that and I saw two volts, what would that tell me? I got a problem with the, but what if I connected this right here to the bus? So now it's on the bus. So I come up here, the bus. How many volts would I see? Two. Two. Nothing. Well, it depends. In my scenario, you would probably, yes. I'm just going to confuse things. I shouldn't have done that. I'll tell you what I was thinking. Is the field hooked up or not? <laughs> no, field's not hooked up. If you connected the bus to it, what's the bus got to it? Battery. Battery. So how many volts would I see on there? 12. About 12. You won't because there's another item that I didn't do. There's a voltage regulator with a burst current cut out that won't allow that. So we can just, but I want to drive home the point that be careful if, the, if you happen to see the battery voltage, well, that's different. But the out, this is going to put out how many volts? Two. All right, we should just get rid of that because that confuses things. Two volts. All right, and if we we're going to do that, I would disconnect it from the bus and see. And if we only get two volts, that means that there is a problem with the field. field. But now I'm going to take the field. I'll use this color right here so we can see. And I'm going to bring it around here, and I'm just going to put it right on there. Now how many volts do I get? Still 
Well, for lack of a better term, all of them. Okay. Why would I get all of them? Unregulated. Because here's my output. And by the way, this is grounded to the case. See how it's grounded to the case? Okay. This comes up through here. And this goes through here. And it finds its way back around to ground. So as the armature starts to put, it's going to get its two volts. It's going to put out its current. Where's the current going to go? No, the uh, armature is going to come through here. Where's its? Both where's the armature's the, path to ground? Through the right here. Through the armature. Here. So path to ground from the armature is through what? Field. Field. Well, how to get to the field? Through the coils. So how much current do the coils have going through it? All of it. So it's going to produce the absolute strongest magnet this thing is capable of producing, which this is turning inside of that absolute strongest magnet it can produce. So how much current is going to be in the armature? Which feeds right back into the coils. So your voltage is going to go all the way to the needle pegs out. And that's what you would see right here on the voltmeter, a pegged out voltage. Um, probably a belt because I think the belt will start smoking from the load. It's really hard to so don't do see. That. Unfortunately, I think you guys missed out on a very important lesson growing up. When I was a kid, my dad bought me this really cool light for the front of my bicycle with a little generator that, that went on the wheel. And you get going real fast and engage it. And this light would just kind of go dim. And it was like, you had to really pedal hard just to get this stupid little light to move. So you learn about magnetism and how hard a generator really has to work to produce some the magnetism. Anything else do that these days? I was trying to think of something. They got a whole thing about that sometimes at the mall. They like, they like make you blend your own shake on a bicycle. And like, and, and they, <laughs> if you see if you can there you ride, go. ride the bike fast okay. to put the blender down. It's just dance. It's fucking hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. That is an F type, or I'm sorry, A type, A type. So A and B type generators. So A type generators. Oh, thank you. A type. A type generators need a ground to complete the field. Okay, remember I told you with, you know, the interpoles and all that stuff, you know, well, as long as you get the kind of concept. All right, with this right here, if you don't get that, good luck. You're doomed. Doomed, you're screwed, which is both screwed and doomed. To understand that the A-type needs a ground because what we're going to do is we are going to put a voltage regulator right here. Voltage regulator. We'll get into that, but that is a voltage regulator. Voltage regulator. And what does the voltage regulator do? It regulates how much ground it is going to get by adding resistance or points that vibrate or something. But if you don't get a lot of ground, then you don't get a lot of voltage through the coils. And if you don't get a lot of voltage through the coils, you regulate the generator okay the voltage all right now the opposite of that not the opposite but let me see, let me see. Uh, can i have a question yes so so basically it regulates the voltage because the more the more less ground you get essentially it's the more it will continue to produce right. more voltage basically yeah if i put a big fat resistor in here then i wouldn't get much current flowing through the coils right because it's in yeah. series with a big fat resistor Okay, so you want it, I mean, you need it to go to ground, basically, but you just want to be able to... You want to limit that ground. Yeah. You've got to limit it, but it needs a ground. Okay. All right, so over here on this one, let me think here. So we got field coils. Got a positive. We got a minus. This is a B-type? This would be B-type. And I think your book is going to draw it different, probably more accurately, because I'm kind of going by memory here. So put that to there. And we can do this. And right there, and I'll just do it different. So we got the F over here for no particular reason. 
And this, of course, would ground to the case. And this one would go right over here. That'd be my A. So A is always going to be positive. positive. That's my armature. What is my field missing over here? The ground. Oh, well, no. All right. Voltage regulator? <clears throat> well, of course it's missing a voltage regulator, but what does it need to make it work? A is what? Positive or negative? Positive. positive. Always. The case is grounded, so the field needs? It needs a positive. It needs, power needs a positive because it's grounded right here. So look, we got the ground going through the, going through the coils. Ground, ground, ground. So what is this missing now? Positive. Positive. So we need a positive over here. And that'd be your so, so what happens if I take this and go to ground? Nothing. 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 It's like, so. All right. So in order to get max output of this generator, I have to go right there. Well, I just got to get a positive. And where does, where's the nearest positive? Well, the output of the generator, about that far away. There's positive right there. All right. So if I did that, how much voltage would I get out of the generator? Every single bit possible. So what do I need to do? Put a voltage, voltage regulator. regulator. Put a voltage regulator. So the armature is also positive? Always. Armature is always positive. How did the field become positive? It didn't become positive. It's looking for a positive. Oh. And this one, it's not negative. It's looking for a negative. In fact, it is positive if you think about it. But probably don't think about it that way. It's looking for a negative for an A-type. Down here, it's looking for a positive. You have to have that down. Otherwise, nothing will make sense from here. So how do we control the output of the generator on the B-type? By regulating the voltage going into the field. By regulating how much positive voltage goes into the field by adding a, a variable resistor of some sort. Um, honestly, we could do that. The, the most simplest way to do this would simply be, and both of them are the same, put a variable resistor in there and hire a monkey, right? Or a small child. And so we would wire it as, as being the genius mechanics we are. We would hire the A type. We'd go, well, there's the F post. Let's just run it through a variable resistor, run that up to the cockpit with a big, big knob on it, little variable resistor, and then wire the other end of the resistor to ground, ground. ground, right? And we take the small child and we say, look, here's a big voltmeter right here. Here's green, here's red. Yeah, that's exactly it. So with the needle, and then we'll make it like this is green, and I like that, and this is red. So this would be the zero end, and this would be 30 volts. Well. This would be 13, and this would be, I'll say 15. We'll give the kid a break. So anytime it gets to 15, you better add, add or reduce. Add resistance. Every time it gets to 15, I want more resistance. And every time it gets to 13, a little less resistance. And so that way the alternator or the generator always stays between 13 and 15. And it would be no different down here. It's just that when we wired it, instead of wiring the F through the resistor to negative, we just wire it to a positive. What's more, what's seen more commonly, uh, A type or B type? Or are they about equal and it's just... Well, let me tell you this story. Uh, oh. Where I used to work, we overhauled generators. When I say we, I mean not me. Because <laughs> we had an old guy who loved overhauling generators. Oh. And this was the procedure. He would overhaul the generators, take them out to the airplane, put them in, put them on a brand new motor as part of the overhaul procedure. And we would start up the airplane and, we would, and I would say, I have no current flow. The ammeter is showing zero. So he would say, well, we need to flash the field. And he would do something up front and then it still didn't work. So I would take off said generator 
and said, voltage regulator, drive them out here to Rio Linda to a place called George's Electric, which was a certified repair station, and say, George, well, actually it's Michael, the George's Electric or Michael worked. <laughs> this isn't working. And he would go back and goes, well, it's because you blew out the voltage regulator. <laughs> and he put it on and go, nothing wrong with the generator. Or sometimes it was, well, you got an A-type generator with a B-type voltage regulator, and that's why you blew it up. Or it was, yeah, you flashed the field wrong, and you blew it up. So I said, hey, you know what would be faster? Just cut, it, just, just cut out all the, let's just take this stuff to George's Electric. They're certified, and we'll have them do it. So that's how I did it. So what's more common? I don't know. <laughs> well, whatever is at George's. Yeah, whatever he said. Because sometimes the best part of, of uh, I don't know, something is knowing when you shouldn't do something. We didn't have a test stand for these things anyway, so I said we should not do them because we don't have a test stand. All right, so we have the A-type generator needs a ground to complete the field. Therefore, B-type generators need a positive to complete the field. Now, if you read the manual, some of you will, it will say something opposite of what I just said. Uh, like an A-type, or a B-type a B is internally grounded. Well, that's true. The B-type is internally grounded, but what does it need on the output? They don't tell you that. They just said it's internally grounded. Oh, thanks for telling me that. What does that mean? I just told you what it means. If it's internally grounded, then the F post needs positive. positive. And if it said, well, the uh, the fields are, I don't know what it says on there exactly. I think it just says B type are grounded internally and the A types are not. Thank you for that. OK, this is actually what's going on there. What's that? Yeah. All right, so I guess that's uh, enough for tonight, even though I'm still having fun. It could keep going, but... <laughs>